All right, so the next one we're going to look at is the acoustic version of Layla by Eric Clapton. Now this one, what we're going to need are three, and I'm going to be playing these on the fifth string. I'm playing D minor, and then I'm moving down to A sharp or B flat. I'm going to call it B flat, and then C. Now. What would be great for you to do is to kind of think about where you are in your playing and how much you know about your fretboard and go, okay, well, I think I'd rather play D minor here. Now B flat, I don't have a choice. B flat, I gotta play as a bar chord because it doesn't really exist as an open chord. You see? So now we're experiencing that we can mix and match open and bar chords, but bar chords are a necessity. There's, there's no capo that's gonna fix our situation here. We, we, need to, we need to figure this out. So D minor, okay? And then we could go to B flat. Now we could go to B flat here if we wanted to. And then we could go to C here if we wanted to. Or D minor here and B flat here and C here, right? However you wanna organize those, that's exactly where I want your brain to be is you know, you might be choosing a certain way because that's where you are in your guitar journey right now. That's what makes the most sense. And certain chords are hard. Eventually, what you'll do is you'll get to the point where you're playing them a certain way because it just it's easier to memorize. Uh, it sounds more fluent, right? Um, it sounds more congruent is another word I could use. Um, where moving between open chords and bar chords works great. But in this particular case, I just want to keep it all kind of consistent with this fifth string bar chord of sound. Now notice that it is, again, it is a little fast. And if you're not ready for this, it's okay. You can always, you know, go back and study some other things or find some other songs. But I just want to show you this because it's using a whole host of different things here in terms of my strumming. Again, I get my maraca going. And you'll notice when I shift, when I have to move, I don't stop strumming. I just use some scratches to fill the space as I go. Right there. And so a great little technique that we use as guitar players is when we have to move, instead of going, you know, trying to do something like that, we don't do that. We just keep playing. The arm just keeps making that rhythm like a drummer would. And as we move, again, I'm not really changing anything about what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get from here down to here. And during the process of my moving, you're going to hear some scratching happening as a result. And it's a very natural thing, and it's the way the guitar really works. Uh, before I go to that, when I first started learning about all this stuff, you know, again, nobody ever taught me to think about these things. I just encountered them and went, wow, this is impossible. Like, how do I get from here, like down there instantaneously, so there's no... And then eventually you start figuring out as you practice more, it's not about how fast you can get from here to here in lightning speed. It's, it's the smoothness of everything. And so it's okay to continue strumming and hit nothing, right? Hit just a simple scratch, and it's gonna sound just fine when you're playing. And as you watch, if you go watch Eric Clapton play this, you're gonna see that's exactly what he's doing and everybody else does too. It's the natural motion of strumming and chording. That is what you need to try and get to. Okay, is letting this hand create that ocean, right? That organic element that we've talked about a lot before. And then letting this hand do the work, okay? Now, if you're not good at your fifth string bar chords or you're not very good at switching between them or whatever the case may be, then this song or this style of chording is not for you right now, and that's okay. Again, there's all kinds of songs that I wanna learn how to play that I'm not ready for either. I just gotta keep working on things, right? and have more time, of course. Um, so you could play it like this. Or I could have put D minor way up here. And that would have been okay. It sounds a little bit too big for me. I kind of like the, the, the fifth string because it's not quite so big. You know, as I move to the sixth string, then all of a sudden I get this big boom of the sixth string sound, and that's why I like playing it on the fifth string here. But you might go. And 
like that a little bit better or that makes sense with where you're at in your head in terms of playing guitar, I don't want you to stress about that. I want you to have fun, right? But this is now showing us all the different options that we can do, but the complexity of learning how to strum and chord at the same time. Hey, Steve Stein here, and it's been awesome showing you how to play more songs these past few days. Now, I want to let you know that I've put together 10 of my best courses for email subscribers to create my greatest hits bundle so you can play awesome rock, metal, acoustic, and blues songs. You can scroll down to check out each of the courses you'll get in the bundle below. Here's what I need you to know, though. This page goes live on Tuesday, May 3rd at 6 a.m. Pacific, and the bundle will start out at $19.95, which is over 95% off, and it's going to go up $0.25 cents per order. That means the first 500 or so members are guaranteed huge savings on the bundle. Plus, there's three fast action bonuses that you'll definitely want to check out. So make sure you bookmark the link near this video, mark your calendar, and set an alarm because the earlier you grab your copy, the more you're going to save. So see you next Tuesday at 6 a.m. Pacific.